Hello, my name is Rich Howard, owner of Architectural Builder Supply. This video is to bring you a closer look at the best access, number 1E74C. Well, 1E74C181 RP3626. I wanted to say that in the proper cadence of how you know, it's 1E74C181 RP3626. It's a mortise cylinder housing, um, is what it is. And of course, uh, it's a super long part number, um, but you know, the benefit of having such a nice long detailed part number is that you're able to derive exactly what you want. And Best and some other companies, in fact, a sister company of Best's, which would be Dorma, um, they do a really great job at giving you the matrix by which to determine a proper part number. It allows anyone to look at their catalog and then to sufficiently determine or decide what is the right hardware for the application. This long story short happens to be simply a mortise cylinder housing for uh, Adams Wright storefront material. This client has a little bit of uh, other material, Adams Wright MS 1850 locks that are there. So they want to run best cores into it. Well, you're going to need a, uh, an Adams Wright cam. Okay, they want best cylinders, best cores with their Adams Wright storefront hardware. So this is a 1E74C181RP3626. A visual tour first, then we'll look at the product catalog. Uh, this cylinder is be a, a, like a thin head mortise cylinder. Okay, The overall length of the cylinder is measured from the underside of the head to the back of the cam. You can see it's inch and three eighths. That's a very common length, inch and three eighths inch and a half. Those are common lengths for interchangeable, small format interchangeable core or large format removable core cylinders. Very typical. Um, this is made of brass. This features a milling on the side uh, so that when you ins uh, install this into your mortise lock, you'll tighten those set screws. They'll fit inside of that milling. The best mortise housing also has this hole that's been drilled and tapped, and that's for the security screw that you will install. And actually, this package came with two, and I'll, I'll show you both of them. Okay, this is the one that you'll use, the one with the long tip. This other screw that's here is included with a spacer, and that spacer you would drop into the back in case you were using a shorter, like a six pin cylinder, because this is indeed appropriate to accommodate a seven pin length uh, cylinder, a uh, core, uh, I should say. Um, if So if you're using 6-pin, you'll drop that black disc back there over the drive member um, to take up that space behind there, okay? Now, that's what, this, that's what this is for. Now, that security set screw that's here, what they want you to do, uh, according to the installation instructions, is they want you to thread that into this strange angled hole. Well, it's not as hard as it seems. But what you end up doing is maybe just trying to get it started or at least held there with your finger. And once you have it kind of held in position, you'll be able to see it right down through the hole that's at the tip of my finger. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hold my finger on that so it doesn't fall and bring my small precision screwdriver. And I'll turn that counterclockwise or loosen it so that I serve to draw that into the housing. You're going to want to draw that all the way into the housing to the point where you'll be able to thread your cylinder into the body. So you're going to need to get that below the surface. You can continue to turn it and you'll get it below the surface to the point where you'll be able to thread that in. Once you have the cylinder installed, you will then tighten that set screw, turning the screwdriver clockwise to drive that out. Okay, so that it will act to prevent someone from trying to attack the cylinder by uh, unthreading it with a pipe wrench to spin that off. That's why that's there. Okay, Because the only thing holding the cylinder in the lock body would be these milled grooves on either side where that set screw from the lock goes through. So you'll want that screw most definitely installed and most definitely put into place. Okay, like a, it, It's most certainly a security feature. Um, also with this lock, you're going to get the RP3, which is these two, which are these two nesting trim rings that are here. Okay, give you a size of each. 
And this, of course, is 626, which is satin chrome. The thickness of the larger of the two rings, 0 0.422, 0 0.422. The thinner one is 0 0.143, 0 0.143. Okay. There's also a link below this video to the installation instructions along with the product brochure or the product catalog. So let's switch to the screen view now and take a look at all of that supporting documentation. Okay, so this is the product that we're looking at here. And below this video are two links, uh, one to the installation instructions and then the other to the product uh, brochure that we're going to go over now. Let's look at the installation instructions first. And they will you know, give you an overview of, of what I just discussed um, regarding the security set screw. So first, use these instructions to install the best mortise cylinder into either a best mortise lock or another manufacturer's mortise lock. What they say is if there's something that happens to that other manufacturer's mortise lock that renders this incompatible, um, to contact best and let them know. Uh, that would be the course of action to take. I can't think of a design change in a mortise lock that would prevent that from being used, a mortise cylinder. From the outside of the cylinder now, install the cylinder set screw, which we just demonstrated. From the outside of the cylinder, thread the set screw slotted head first as shown in figure one. You really can't thread that in. You, you need to have, just hold it in place and use your screwdriver through the core uh, access location. And then you'll turn that counterclockwise and drive it into the cylinder. Then you'll install the cylinder. First, you're going to loosen the set screws that are in the lock body itself, those same set screws that will nest into the milling in the side. Note the length L of the old cylinder. If the best cylinder is longer, and it possibly is, Select a cylinder ring that will provide the correct length. It does come with the RP3. This version does, and we'll go over the other options. This is the screw they're talking about loosening. It would be in the edge of your lock body. There could be two there, and there likely will be two. Unless it's a... Uh, uh, well, unless it's a lock that's absolutely handed. Um, you'll want to loosen that. You'll want to thread... The cylinder in they talk about using a best cylinder wrench now a best cylinder wrench is something that you insert down into uh, this is really a two-sided tool um, you'll insert this end down into the cylinder and then you'll have these this handle here basically to allow you to turn that mortise cylinder rather than trying to thread the mortise cylinder in using the very tips of your fingers and thumb on this very thin head you'll be able to insert all of this in um, and then install the cylinder then pull the tool out you can put this end into the cylinder and that end of the tool will act as a way by means for you to test the lock without the key it will operate the throw member activating the cam the cam will then act on the actual lock body itself if you're doing a lot of these cylinders and you might be delegating the work to someone who doesn't make a living installing finished hardware this might uh, be well worth the investment in the tool um, do not set do not screw the cylinder in too tightly yeah you need to get that to vertical um, so that it works Obviously, before you do that, install your cylinder collars uh, when needed. You'll, once you have it threaded in, you'll then tighten that cylinder security screw. Then you put your core in. That's a separate video, I suppose. Now, the product catalog that's here, the e-cylinders section, you will always get to the how-to-order section of Best's catalog. And as you see all of these options... Uh, they make it quite easy and when the options exceed the available space they'll refer you to the page so we're dealing with a, with a 1e that's the typical 1 and 5 30 second of an inch diameter cylinder they also make a 3e which is an inch and a half that was popularized uh, by pf corbin in the late 1900s and uh, pardon me the late 1800s the very late 1800s 
and the very early 1900s. It's what they called their master ring cylinder, a very uh, fascinating cylinder platform that's 130 years old. And if you wanted to know more about the master ring, you can go to the manufacturer's page in our site, then go to the Corbin Russwin page, and there would be a... Um, I would say that there would be a as complete as possible article right here, albeit a wordy document, admittedly, to the master ring. So if you wanted to dive into the master ring cylinder, you could certainly do so. But that's what that 3E is. It's an inch and a half diameter, or what they would call a jumbo mortise cylinder. It's not the biggest cylinder in the world when it comes to mortise cylinders, but it's 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 bigger than average. So we have a 1E7, so it's a 7-pin housing, accepts all best cores, and they do include that disc if you know that you're putting 6-pin length cores into them. Um, we have a 4, a 7-4. It's a mortise cylinder. For additional special mortise cylinders, see page 4 and 5, which we'll get to. Standard mortise code, sure. So the code means the length. We're dealing with just the typical length, the standard length, and we'll go over page 4 and 5. Then our cams are on page 8. We've got the C181, Adam's right. We're doing an RP3, which is the standard package on page 9. And then your finish, and if it's a handed cylinder, you would have to uh, install that. And you might say, well, there are no handed mortise cylinders. Well, there certainly are. If you were to look up the term Brinks, or a Brinks, B-R-I-N-K-S, uh, that would be a handed, that would be an example of a handed cylinder. Those are absolutely handed. So let's scroll through. Our rings are here. Our RP, RP1, RP2, our standard RP3, which we measured earlier. A reference to that uh, cylinder wrench tool is here. Our length. We measured ours at a standard, you know, inch and three-eighths. Um, you know, they're saying to designate two, 22 if you need inch and 3 eighths, but I have measured inch and 3 eighths. I'm going to put my caliper on this and actually measure it very accurately. My caliper tells me, well, okay. So my caliper tells me it's 1.406, 1.406, so um, very, very slightly heavy on inch and 3 eighths. You leave that blank and it's going to be basically inch and three eighths or 1.40, whatever I said, seven. Um, one and five thirty second is the standard diameter. 32 threads per inch happens to be standard. Nothing to worry about there or to have to think about. But if you do need a special length because you have an unusual thickness door or where you are locating the door, pardon me, where you are positioning the lock in the door might require you to have an unusual length cylinder. Uh, you might have an inch and three quarter thick door, but then you're adding one inch of applied material to the uh, secure side of that opening, which now means you're going to need a longer cylinder. And what's nice about that is Best offers those up to six inch. Um, an inch and a half cylinder if you wanted to see more. Special cylinders around pages four and five. A taper head style mortise cylinder is here. A handicap compliant thumb turn. At least I believe this to be handicap compliant. Uh, they don't indicate that it is, but this shape, I've seen in other manufacturer's cylinders that are called as handicap compliant. More additional special cylinders, which I won't go over here. You can review those. Uh, these cylinders, these high security cylinders, would meet the requirements of UL 437, which is a standard that says the cylinder must... Uh, accommodate and not fail so many minutes of drilling, of sawing, of picking, of other bypass methods. So if you need a UL-437, best can certainly help. And I think it's a standard cylinder that has added armoring to the exterior. I don't know, um, I don't know that as fact. I don't know how this is absolutely different, but it could be, this could be just a swivel cylinder face plug that is armored or made of armor, you know, high-grade material over the head of a standard cylinder. I believe Yale does it that way. Um, I want to get to the cams, which was on page nine, I believe. Page eight. Page eight is where those are. So our C181 is here. 
other cams obviously cloverleaf style cam different cam types with the dimensions so that you can determine what you need that's clearly for Schlage C265 Schlage L uh, cylinder rings if you need those cylinder collars if you need those so you might you're gonna want to put together in your mind um, you know the length of the cylinder what's required for the application and how much of that's going to be exposed that might require that you need a cylinder ring you'll want to map that out and uh, be mindful of that when I'm doing when I'm thinking of a special mortise cylinder I'm basically saying well my door is inch and three-quarter thick my lock body is here I've got my latch you know the center line of an inch and three-quarter thick door is seven eighths so I usually like to think of my cylinder as being to the center of that lock less a sixteenth is kind of how I do that um, or or thereabouts so that's you know kind of what works for me and I have not seen where it doesn't work yet um, but to be mindful to know that you know the length of the body when you measure a it, it it oh forgive me their best is doing this differently I I forgot that they're measuring only the length of the body itself um, which is actually a good way to do it um, because when you use my example previously to know where your cylinder stops and where your cam resides is always a good thing. Um, you know, so you know that if you have to breach through the lock case and that lock case thickness is 0.22 inch and then your cam can operate, you can kind of determine that. Uh, the l actual length of the brass body itself is 1.275. 1.275. Yes, 1.275. So, um, almost an eighth of an inch shy an inch and three eighths. So let's back up. 1.275 is going to be the standard length if you don't specify. So be mindful. Uh, other manufacturers will include that cam. Best is not. So be mindful of that. The thickness of the cam, and I would imagine all of the other cams are also the same thickness, just to put that data out there. 0.135 is the thickness of the cam. 0.135. Okay, so that covers the product catalog that's here. Now, the link to the manufacturer's page, which is here, that's going to, when you click on that, that'll allow you to review not only all of the best products that we sell, but also a link to the manufacturer's website, as well as a link to the full product catalog, which I would very much encourage that you review. Let's wrap up this video on camera. Now, I'm admittedly uh, a fan of Best. Uh, I don't do a tremendous quantity of business with Best because historically they were always direct to market, so to speak. Um, and it had, a, had has been only somewhat recently that they now sell through wholesale to where clients can request that material from their hardware suppliers rather than um, technically being able to purchase it direct. And I think as a, as a result of that, long history of how they would deliver their product to market um, you know, you'll see traditional distribution not necessarily involved in selling it uh, but I'm very grateful for being allowed to and other distributors like myself naturally to participate in selling the material because why they've got a great product they have a tremendous technical support staff um, it is Frank Best in 1921 who literally literally patented the original concept of the small format interchangeable core so this company is responsible for this entire cylinder platform and while that original patent which is actually on that manufacturers page somewhere it most certainly is yep it's definitely there that original patent is not the same concept of what we have today but there are subsequent patents that um, show how the control key works in a best small format interchangeable core cylinder. Now it was always known as best style. The remote, the interchangeable core was a best style. Well, at some point in Schlage's history, they decided they didn't want to participate in marketing that type of interchangeable core using a competitor's name, so they termed it small format. It was literally a legendary locksmith who worked for Schlage. I believe his name was A.J. Hoffman, who coined the term small format 
interchangeable core, which then, which applied to the best type and all of the clones of best, the Falcons, the Arrows, and all of the other knockoffs. Schlage titled theirs full-size interchangeable core. The rest of the industry calls that large format. So if you're dealing with small format, it means best or its clones. And if you're dealing with something else, large format, it would be manufacturer specific, even though that they even though they all make housings and cylinders almost all to fit each other's material. Like the instructions said, if you're installing this in someone else's lock, I mean that's the world we live in. And that, that's a good world to live in, in the sense that you you like best locks, but you don't like their king. You love best king, but you don't like their locks. You love Schlage locks or Yale locks, but you want to use your best king system. The fact that there's this homogenization, this cross-pollination, um, allows freedom to the end user so that these manufacturers can really compete on multiple fronts. And I think be more successful. I would say best would like to sell you a thousand mortise housings for your um, hospital project versus not getting anything. Now, so in conclusion, if you were to be studying interchangeable core small uh, form, interchangeable core or removable core cylinder technology, the name Best is going to be absolutely front and center in that conversation. It's literally an entire half of the entire world that you would certainly want to review and um, and study, okay? If you have any questions on the best, this is their part number 1E7, pardon me, 1E74C181 RP3626 mortise cylinder housing or any other best product, please feel free to reach out to us. And thank you.